When you're building solo, every tool you choose either helps you move faster or becomes a bottleneck. Over the last few years, I've gone from zero to shipping profitable apps using tools that keep things lightweight, fast and flexible. This isn't a best of list or some dream desk setup. This is what I actually use every single day to design, build and promote my projects. Whether you're just getting started or looking to optimize your own workflow, I'll walk you through my full stack hardware, software, tech, and even how I shoot content to market my apps. It's all in one look at how I stay productive and profitable as a solo founder. When you're solo, your gear has to work double hard. My daily driver is a MacBook Pro M3 Pro. It's powerful enough to handle everything I throw at it. Local servers, heavy VS code workspaces, AI tools, even video editing. And it's quiet, fast and dependable, which is everything when your entire business lives on one machine. I pair that with the MX Master 3S mouse. I used to be all trackpad, but once I tried this mouse, it genuinely changed how I work. The side scroll, custom buttons and ergonomic grip make a noticeable difference when I'm working long hours, especially when video editing and its linkable customization with DaVinci Resolve is a time saver. One underrated piece of gear I bring everywhere and that I've been asked about in the comments is the GLI Net Muddy Router. When I work from cafes or shared spaces, I plug this in and instantly get secure encrypted access to any network. It's compact, fast and gives me peace of mind when I'm pushing commits or handling data on public Wi-Fi. All I have to do is hook the router up to the public Wi-Fi, turn on the VPN and then my device will connect to the router. I get full access to settings inside so I can set my own network up and even have my own captive portal set up. For content, I keep things simple. I shoot all my time lapses and workspace footage on an iPhone 14. The camera quality is more than good enough and it's always in my pocket so I never miss those behind the scenes moments. All of this fits in a backpack which means I can stay productive whether I'm at home, on a train or out shooting B-roll for the next YouTube video. The key for me is minimal gear, maximum output. My go-to front-end framework is React. It's flexible, has a massive ecosystem and lets me iterate quickly. I haven't really followed the hype and moved or tried any other frameworks. React has worked for me and I love the focus on reusable components, so I'm sticking with it. For UI, I rotate between standard CSS, Tailwind and different component libraries. One I'm really liking at the moment is Ant Design. It's a great library for when I need polished components out of the box. It saves hours. Payments? I'm using Stripe. It's one of the few tools I've never had issues with and their documentation is solid. As well as Stripe, I use Extension Pay. It's an open source API which integrates with your extension and also your Stripe to accept payments. I write all my code inside Visual Studio Code, but I've also been using Cursor lately. It brings AI into the editor in a way that actually helps. I've used it to debug tough problems, write boilerplate faster, and even explore unfamiliar libraries. These AI tools are great and can be of so much value if used correctly. Once you've built a great app, the next challenge is getting people to care. That's where content comes in. I use my iPhone 14 to shoot time lapses, B-roll and workspace clips. The camera is good enough for what I need it for as I don't need anything too fancy. And being able to capture spontaneously has helped me stay consistent with content. Using this though does mean I need to bring a small phone stand, so I've got my eyes on the DJI Osmo Pocket, but I will hold out for now. I edit everything in DaVinci Resolve, which might sound intimidating, but I'm fairly used to it and it is an amazing piece of software. Once I learned a few shortcuts and built out a couple reusable templates, I could edit a full YouTube video in under two hours. These videos, even short ones, are what bring traffic to my apps. It's not about going viral, it's about showing progress, being transparent and creating trust. The tools I use here aren't production level, they're sustainable. That's what matters when you're solo. Tools alone don't build the product, but when they connect well, they create momentum. I use Formspree, which is to collect user feedback when someone uninstalls the app. Their plan gives you 50 freeform submissions a month. I hook this into my Fast Folders landing page, and when a user fills in the form, it is sent to my email. I deploy my apps on Render as their free plan is generous, which has made deployment feel invisible. It just works. Push to GitHub and it's live in seconds. What matters is that all these tools reduce resistance. The goal is frictionless shipping. That's how I keep momentum without a big team or endless meetings. 
At the end of the day, these tools from the hardware I rely on to the software that powers my workflow aren't just conveniences. They're what help me stay consistent, ship faster and keep leveling up as a solo dev. But remember, no tool is a silver bullet. What really makes the difference is how you use them with intention, curiosity and a willingness to keep learning. Don't be a slave to your tools, be a master of them. If you've got tools that change the way you build, I'd love to hear about them. Drop a comment below about any that you can recommend. I'm always trying to sharpen my stack. There are a whole bunch more videos like this on my channel that can help motivate you, give you some form of direction or just even different ways of thinking. But if you want to know how to turn side projects into real products, then click this video here. It's a good one.